Welcome to another the James Bill. Hey, well, thanks for joining me. Luckily, I got the car quite close. So, I'm stocking up on coal. This lot was 20 quid from Audi for 50 kilos. Uh, someone made a mention on my channel about it a couple of days ago, and in fairness, I saw it on the uh, Facebook London Boaters group. But, uh, yeah, 10 kilos for 3 99 So that's brilliant. A couple of weeks there. The stove this time of year produces a lot of waste um, and kind of takes quite a bit of maintenance. So I'm going to clean it all up now. Now it's cold, I might as well. Um, I don't often do it, but as it's cold, I will. I want to clean the, f the surround as, uh, around it as well. But I'll talk to you about how I deal with the waste from the uh, from the stove because two different things you can do with it um, well three for me right, so first things first gonna get the ash out of the uh, the ash pan just check it's cold and I put it in a little box here now this is a cardboard box which is obviously not particularly um, suitable for hot ash this is as I said cold ash so that's fine um at the moment i'm burning coal and that's important to distinguish what you're burning as to what you do with it Right, I'll just let the dust settle. So this is my box of ash and before I discard it all, uh, this is ash from a from burning coal. So coal is full of toxins, um, or the ash of coal is full of toxins. So you can't dispose of it kind of on a towpath or anything. It's got to be disposed of properly um, and environmentally friendly. Uh, but there is a bit of this I can use because as much as it's full of toxins, it's also full of um, kind of charcoal has cleansers in it. So, um, and it's obviously organic matter. So I'm going to uh, use a bit of this before I dispose of it. I'll show you how. I promise you're not going to see anything horrible. So that is just the ash. That is just ash in there. Obviously it's cold. The using of the charcoal and the ash in the uh, toilet really does work. It's uh, it helps neutralise everything. Um, obviously, it's organic matter, um, and uh, yeah, it's freely available. It's kind of uh, it's a good use of it. As I said, you're only chucking it in the bin otherwise. So it's just uh, yeah, helps, and I think it's uh, seems to be working quite well. Here we go. I can now throw that away. Now these tiles here haven't been cleaned since uh, I put them in, um, which won't surprise you to learn. Um, but, and I said at the time, I'm kind of happy for this to be kind of a little bit dirty because it's a stove, it's a fireplace, it is what it is. Um, and obviously they've got white tiles. If I was kind of wanting it to be pristine, I'd have gone for something which wouldn't show up any dirt. And obviously these do, but I don't mind that. Um, I've done this front tile. I did. I went over it just just once with a bit of cleaner, um, and it came up all right. My mum was saying that she thinks these are kind of ruined uh, forever because I didn't seal them or something. But um, as I said, I didn't. I don't really want them to be pristine white um, like her bathroom floor is. Um, I mean, it's nice for that, but it'd be a bit weird on a fireplace. Um, but I'm going to go and give it some cleaner. I'm going in with Barkeeper's Friend, which uh, someone sent me a while ago. Um, this stuff's pretty good. 
kind of sprinkle it on and then you get a wet cloth you can make it into a paste or you can just kind of use it as this but you just kind of work it all in and it kind of turns into a bit of a paste and this can be used on any surface so it doesn't matter because obviously this is a bit multi-surface around here with another cloth. Look at that, that's come up all right. pristine but nor should it be well, that's all right I'm gonna do the rest of the fireplace now well I'm slowly getting pretty bored of this but I've got to go to Uxbridge now for a meeting uh, but whilst we're there let's go and have a look and see why the Grand Union's closed This is lock 87, um, Denham Deep Lock. And living up to its name, this is the deepest lock on the Grand Union Canal. And you'll see here the boys from the CRT are going about replacing all the gates. They're all pretty old down here. Um, and this is also the widest lock. So they're starting with this one, it's the bottom and the widest. Um, the widest one's important because they use these um, stop planks to hold the water back so they can drain the lock and uh, replace all the gates. Um, the stop planks are made of, um, or dam planks are made of uh, Douglas fir, so they swell up in the water, hold all the water back, so they can work in a empty lock. This will be done for seven weeks though, closed, so uh, can't get through here. And these are the balance beams which go on top of the gates, um, so obviously we can open and close them. But these new ones are just going to be um, all timber, which basically means that they're going to keep them unpainted so the metal ones which are the traditional black and white ones which some of them have been in place for about 150 years um, are being replaced by these ones but they're going to be natural timber colored i found it really interesting going to denham deep lock the guys there are really friendly they kind of talk to you about what they're doing and the kind of obstacles they've got to overcome um, the uh, the gates are made up in the north and they're brought down by road and then brought to the local locks by um well certainly for that one because you can't access it by by road so um they they bring obviously the lock gates up uh, by boat um but yeah it's that's going to be closed for seven weeks and then they're moving slowly up towards harefield so you're not really going to get passage through there until the new year now um but he said uh, some of those lock gates are the originals so kind of what, 180 years old 200 years old which is like amazing to think of that um but yeah also that they're not painting the new one so but i can't quite work that out because there's a there's a new set of gates up at berkhamstead and he the guy i spoke to down there was the one who installed these ones and i said they're so good the new gates uh, but those ones i seem to recall being painted but he said these ones are definitely going to be left natural colored but anyway i think i can hear 
my fuel boat coming. Um, I've run out of, uh, well, I haven't quite run out of gas, but I'm running low on gas. And I've been trying for ages to get myself a new six kilogram uh, bottle, but you know, I've said it before, it's a nightmare getting getting gas, um, getting new bottles anyway. So yeah, the fuel boat is gonna come down now. Rob's behind, it needs some diesel. So um, it's coming for that. Yeah, here he comes. This is Jules Fuels. Um, I've just got myself a new six kilogram gas bottle. Um, my 13's got a little bit left in it, so I'm gonna keep that one going. I didn't get any diesel, um, but Jules Fuels are um, obviously fuel stockists, and they cover from, basically from Bulls Bridge, which is the Paddington arm, uh, up to kind of, oh, where do they say? Like near Marsworth, basically. So the patch that I'm gonna be on, this is my fuel boat. They do diesel, gas, coal, wood, you name it, they sell it. So in terms of utilities and fuels on board, uh, I've obviously just stocked up on gas. Uh, I've stocked up on coal. I've got half a tank of water left. I've got half a tank of diesel left although I'm passing a water point soon and the general rule of thumb is if you're passing one and it's free, fill up. So I might do that. Uh, I'll see how we go on. Um, and you see now I dispose of the waste from the stove, which is it does produce quite a lot of waste, to be honest. Um, and in terms of waste from the toilet, um, I'm quite lucky because I'm surrounded by five star hotels, but I'm at mum and dad's pretty much every day having a shower. Um, but uh, the... I have obviously used it, um, as have other people. Um, so uh, Will basically popped down the other day and was here for half an hour. And in that time, used a toilet for a number two and had a tea and used a mug. I mean, talk about taking liberties. Um, so you either can use the LSAM points up and down the cut to dispose of that stuff as long as there is no additives into what you're doing. So you can't put obviously ash in there or anything like that or sawdust or compost like other people do. You can't put any of that down the LSAM, obviously. Um, and the bag you use needs to be one of those natural biodegradable ones. Um, so that's fine. Otherwise, um, use facilities wherever they are. Um, obviously, you can't use the CRT ones because I don't want that. But there's plenty of other ones around towns. Um, I've just been up to the tip today because I had a few other bo um, bags of stuff to chuck out. So yeah, there's plenty of easy ways to dispose of that stuff. Um, and in terms of uh, the wee bucket, um, to be honest, it's hedgerows is usually, I mean, if, you, if, you, if you're an ale standpoint, you can tip it down there, but it doesn't contain much. Um, and as long as you're in a fairly rural area, that's fine. Um, this has been a little bit built up here. Um, so, uh, but we're about to move off so I can sort it out as I go. Um, because it's not nice to do it, you know, on a, in a built up area at all. But if you're in the middle of nowhere, it's no problem. Uh, I've been curious as to my, uh, fuel usage on the boat. Um, so I said half a tank of diesel left and I've come all the way down here. I think I've used it for about oh, 70 hours. I'll have to double check my log. Um, but, um, so yeah, loads of diesel left, that's fine. Water, obviously, I've, I've, I'm, all I'm using is for tea, basically. Um, I'm not, I, I do wash my hands and stuff and brush my teeth in the sink, um, but obviously I haven't got any hot water, so I'm not exactly having long showers or anything. So um, my water usage is obviously gonna jump up as soon as my boiler is installed. Talking of which, um, I'm waiting on the flu part, um, and then I've got all the bits I need. Um, and then it'll be a case of just waiting for Dale to come down or there is someone else up here that I could maybe use. But in terms of the coal and gas usage, which is the only two kind of utility costs you have on a boat, I'm using my trusted whiteboard. Um, I've been going through it. Basically, you've worked out, I've worked out that, I mean, there's a variety of kind of grade of coal you can get, but I've worked out for 10 kilograms, it's a fiver. As I said, you know, that lot I got from Aldi was four quid to, for 10 kilograms and you can easily spend eight quid for 10 kilograms. But, you know, and you can buy in bulk, whatever, but I'll be sorting that out 
um, my coal purchasing, but roughly speaking, it's about that. I've worked out the months I'm going to be using it, and the basically I need 20 kilograms a, a, a week um, for the kind of the middle months, and then when it's really cold um, in like December, January, and February, uh, I'll be up to about 30 kilograms a week or something. But working on that basis, I've worked out it's about 500 quid a year on coal, and in the real cold months I'll be using those coffee logs or um, or heat logs because they do they're really good at producing quite a lot of extra heat and those coffee logs did chuck it out um, but once they burn that's it they kind of disintegrate into nothing so you can't have them overnight at all the only thing you can use overnight is coal um, wood obviously just burns away it's all by anything else by the time you wake up in the morning it's out and it's cold so um, yeah those coffee logs and heat logs and stuff and bits of wood are fine for extra heat but for the main stuff it's got to be coal still so you're 500 quid a year on coal which works out 400 pound at 40 pound a month gas i've so far gone through about 65 quids worth um again without the boiler so i'm expecting to double that as soon as i've got the boiler installed so i'm working out basically gas is about 260 quid a year 25 quid a month um, and that's it. That's the only bills there is. Uh, there's nothing on electric. There's nothing on water. There's nothing on council tax. Obviously, I have a mobile, which is 70 quid a month. Um, or my tariffs up, so I might have to look at that. But yeah, 135 quid a month to live pretty comfortably in the middle of Berkhamsted. Although I've got a to move today. I'll catch you later. Take care. Bye bye.